Welcome to this edition of Aerial Insights. I'm here today with Tim Harris, founder and CEO of Swift Navigation. Swift is a great new product for RTK GPS. Tim, welcome to the program. Thanks, Don. So Tim, why this product and why now? So there's been a lot of changes that have made our product possible. And then also there's an intersection of market forces that have really be made now the time. So on why this product is now possible, there's been massive advances in cell phone technologies, chipsets and the like. Uh, that have gotten the, pr the production power to a point where we can bring down the cost significantly on the technology. And then finally, we're starting to see some really interesting navigation markets emerge, including drones and, and other autonomous driving markets, uh, where this technology is, is really necessary. Right. And at the intersection of this price and these markets, we, the time was right. So, so for folks who aren't in the know, what is RTK GPS and why is it important? So RTK GPS is called real-time kinematic. Uh, it's essentially a, a different form of GPS than the one that's using your cell phone. The one that's using your cell phone is accurate to about 15 feet, um, which is good enough to find the restaurant, but not much else. Yeah. Right? So what we do is called real-time kinematics. It basically does two things to increase accuracy of GPS. Uh, the first is it uses carrier phase measurements in addition to normal GPS signal measurements to read the signal far more accurately. And then we use two units, uh, a base and a rover, to provide corrections for the ionosphere, which cause a certain delay to the signal as they pass through a set of positively charged ions above the, above the Earth. So how does a user actually make use of the data, and, and how are the data better uh, to, to, to make your data collection more accurate? Yeah, so essentially when you have this, these subsets of systems correcting for these errors, you get inch accurate data, which are actually multi multiple centimeter level accurate data. Um, w if you can do that, you can anchor whatever sort of end system data you want in the real world. So if you're taking photos with a drone and you can tag them all, stitching becomes a lot better. Resolution becomes a lot better. That's the first piece. Okay. And then how, how would somebody actually integrate it with a system? You, you, you'd have to have a unit on the drone and a unit on the ground, right? Exactly, yes. So uh, for the time being, you have a unit on the ground that is your base station. You put it into whatever kit you have that's controlling your drone. Um, and then the other one is on your drone. And you can either use radio or cellular link uh, to provide the correction from one unit to another. And, and how do you get that, that radio or cellular link? How, how do you uh, get the, uh, the, the real-time data in, into, the, into the system? So the units are completely symmetrical. Um, and the data link is, is run over kind of standard protocols that, that, uh, that just naturally kind of pick, I mean, it'll automatically pick it up and, and do the correction. So do I have to subscribe to a service to, to no, get that data? No, not at, the, at this point. It's just you use two units. And um, really, it's just passing the corrections from one to another. OK. And do you have uh, examples of how people have used the technology? Oh, yeah. There's, so this technology has been around for a, a long time. Our, our innovations have been around um, price and integration and, and several other key points. Uh, we use the technology currently from everything from autonomous driving tractors to drone systems to um, autonomous finding, farming and mining equipment, and then a lot of data collection and GIS and surveying and the like. OK. And, and what's What's disruptive about Swift Navigation? What are you guys doing that's different? Yeah, we're doing a, f uh, a bunch of things that are different. Uh, this, the, long short, uh, the long and short of it is that um, we are significantly cheaper than anything else in the market. So most of these systems run seven to $10,000 uh, at the bare minimum level. Uh, at that price point, it, you can't put it in your drone, at least in most applications, and you can't put it in your, your car or whatever else you would put it in. Um, our price point is $500 because we've made some key changes in the technology. We've done things that were traditionally done in analog in software and then run those on just commodity components. You know, so these cell phone components I alluded to. Right. That's the first piece. And the second piece is we make it really easy to integrate GPS location with other sorts of data. And this is really key because if you can anchor other sorts of data in the physical world with actual location, uh, then you can action off that information much more precisely because you know where it actually lives in the world. You know where those images live. You know where those scans live, those 3D models or whatever they live. Um, and you can also act cross-platform. So you can have a drone fly over a field, take imagery, take all sorts of bar uh, barometric data, um, you know, density of, of foliage data, whatever it is you, you have. And then you can have another autonomous system act on that exact data without a human intervention. Right? Cool. So what are, the, what are the actual components of the product that a developer or an integrator would use? Uh, I imagine there's hardware, is there software? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's hardware, definitely. We sell uh, basically chips. We call them pixies. Um, kind of a little aerial joke there. Uh, so we, we sell them in kits of two. 
uh, with radio link and everything you need to get started, plug it in. It has all the kind of traditional communication protocols that you would need. There's USB, there's serial, you're adding CAN bus and a couple other um, key things. And then uh, you basically just plug it into your autopilot if you're uh, a maker of an autopilot like Airware. Um, and the autopilot that you're using, we have uh, either kind of standard data formats or we have our own proprietary data format that's really flexible and easy to use for whatever end system you have. Cool. So by democratizing this technology, I hate to use that word, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's what you've done. You've lowered the price point. Technology for the masses. Yeah. Made it easy to integrate. Um, what, what types of new applications do you see people using RTK GPS for? You know, things that people haven't been able to do in the past because it was too difficult or too expensive to integrate. I mean, precision navigation is the big one. I think in our minds, we see a world of autonomous, or, well, ro robots, if you want to call them that. Um, drones, cars, outdoor, you know, fine farming, mining equipment, anything that you want to you want to control very, very accurately, is a complete is a complete game changer, right? Anything that you normally had to do by hand, if you can automate it, for us that makes a, a big difference. Excellent. So yeah, we're we're excited to use it. I'm sure lots of other companies are as well. Um, do you uh, do you have a, a, a release date or a ship date that that you can talk about, or you know, wh when's the product? Gonna be uh, we're in we're in beta testing. We have over a thousand units in beta. Um, out in the field right now. Uh, we're not in general production release yet. We will be early next year. Uh, we have a, a soft date, but um, we'll see how things go. Okay. Well, great. Hey, Tim, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you great. so much, Don.